Now that we've had a chance to run the external links with it turned off and see that you lose your link from one part to another, we can go ahead and uh, try it again and set our preferences. And what we want to do is make sure that keep link with selected object is turned on. Slide this up, it's like okay, and we're gonna repeat what we did in the previous demo. So we have this one part. We will go to the assembly by double clicking it, making sure that you're at the assembly workbench. Within the assembly workbench, we can insert a new part, just like we did in the previous exercise. We're gonna go to Double click this part body to get into the part design. Make it the in work object. Sketch on that same YZ plane. And under sketch, we use the same one we did last time intersect three elements. Grab all the elements that this piece that sits inside is going to be on. Select OK. <clears throat> I'm going to go right to rectangle. Throw this on there. And delete this bottom line. Highlight the rest of it, go right to auto constraint computer, figure out what constraints are missing. Just the one. Highlight the top profile, do your corner. I think we did 10 millimeters. Okay, we will exit out of Sketcher now, create a path. And this time what we'll do is we'll reverse the direction, but we learned from the last one we could do right click measure. And I want to show you something different. For the length, I'm going to do a measure between. Grab this plane. And this plane. There's my distance of 150. Select OK. Select OK. It created that part. That same size. And let's see if this works this time. We'll go back to sketch number one. Select the pad. Change that to 200. Bottom piece does not get affected. Let's go to the top collector of the assembly. We should be able to update. Oh no. I'm going to take a quick snapshot of that. Okay, I'm just going to ignore that and hit close and see. I don't see any errors causing me issues, but it did update. And then we are going to go to the bottom view sketch, actually. So we'll go back into that. Let's change the numbers around like we did last time. And if we did it work, did it right this time this gap is automatically going to be filled. So when we exit out, 
we need to go into the assembly and hit update and that parts all good that worked because I had external links on that's what made that active I uh, wanted to try one other thing forgot what I wanted to try already let's go from the assembly actually oh, what was I gonna check Let's check that sketch one more time. Change that to 25. Change this to 15. Exit out. And then do the update. Again, it seems to be working good. Let's change the colors. I know it's a little hard to see. Okay, so I'm going to try and set my preferences. For my assembly to automatically update. So ideally, if I set my automatic update, and I change the part, it should automatically update that part. Just trying to see if I needed anything else I wanted to change. So I'm going to try update automatic, select OK. Make sure it accepts that. And we will go back to our sketch. Change that back to 20. Change this to 10. We will exit out. Ah, oh, didn't do it. If I double click the assembly, I don't know why it doesn't update. So we're going to right click, update, and you see that part's revised. One more time. Uh, let's change the length. Whoops, the length of this pad to 100. Make the assembly active and update it. <clears throat> I'm not sure why I'm getting that error, but you can see everything is linked and. Uh, one part follows the other. So in theory, in the real world, if you make one part and you're linking everything else, when you go to change that other part, all the other parts that you have linked to it will be an automatic fix. If this part were machined, that would automatically change the tool path. If there were a tool fixture holding this thing together, it would automatically adjust the tool fixture. If there were a drawing created of both the, these parts or however many parts you had, you would have to just update the drawing and the dimensions would automatically be fixed to match the new part. And that is how we should be using the CAD, not breaking everything up and making it all individual and trying to remember which one you changed and if you changed all the other linking parts. One part should change the next. Now for your challenge, apply parameter where they could pick a parameter off the list, key in a length, and it would automatically fix the length and any of Anybody that didn't know Katia would just know that you can edit the parameter and it'll automatically make it whatever length they want. That's your next challenge.